from Beckway, St. Vincent, and the Grenadines. We just arrived here a couple of days ago with news that Hurricane Brett, which has now been downgraded to a tropical storm, which is great, is about to hit us this evening. So we arrived here, we're hiding out in a little bay, and we decided that we would go around our boat, a Halber Grassy 352, and just show you the types of things that we are doing to prepare her for this storm. Whether the things that we do are right, wrong, overkill, not enough, you tell us. But this is what we do to prepare our liveaboard boat for a tropical storm. Good morning. Prep for Hurricane Brett has begun. We had all of our fenders up on the arch, but we decided to take them down. We don't want any extra windage causing the arch to shake or anything. Apparently we're gonna be having gusts of up to 40 in the bay here. We are pretty lucky in that we have this big hill over here. The wind is going to be coming from this direction. Then we'll have that protection, which is great. Be prepared to be a roaming fender in case any of these other boats around here decide to go for a little walkabout. Checking out our snubber game right now. We're getting gusts about up to 18 at the moment. Do you feel okay about our snubber situation? The next thing that we're going to secure is our mainsail. We had a windstorm one time and the mainsail wanted to come up out of the sail pack. Don't have the main halyard on it right now. We have brought it back over here because it was making quite the amount of noise clacking on the mast. And Jeff is just finding a random line that we have up here, spare, not doing anything. And we will secure it that way. We also took down our monstrously large Canada flag so it doesn't blow away. Jeff is tearing up the cockpit to get some spare lines. He's working on a second snubber up front at the bow. The idea is that we'll have a secondary snubber attached to the chain and have that just laying on deck so that we can deploy it if needed, get rid of the first snubber if it snaps, that kind of thing. But I'll let Jeff talk to you more about that. have the dinghy secured as always this is just how we have it for under passage anyway we use this one as a jack line for Jeff if he has to go up to the front so we'll just keep that how it is we also have them tied as an X back here nothing new here Jerry's are all tied down they're not moving and we have the solar panels they're not moving either they're attached by four of these guys and those are not gonna give way there Jeff goes again, doing another task, wrapping an extra spare spinnaker halyard around the headsail. So there is no way that this is coming out. Before we continue, huge shout out to our amazing patrons. We are so thankful for each one of you. If you're enjoying our content and would like to join the Joko crew, we'll have a link in the description box below. Thank you. Second snubber, you can pre rig it. And then, for whatever reason, reason number one, the main snubber snaps under load, you can fall back to a second snubber. Or reason number two, if you decide you need more scope for dragging, then you can go to the second snubber and set it. So, on the left hand side is the second snubber, and you can get a shot just over there. It's tied to the chain with a camel hitch. Camel hitch is good because no matter what direction the pull is on the chain, it will not release. Obviously that's what you want, even though it should only be loaded from the one direction. But you never know if we start hobby horsing like crazy and it's unloading. It's possible. Yeah. So that line is just sitting at your feet. Mm -hmm. um, and that is about 40 feet there. So I could abandon this one here. And by abandoning, all I really have to do is uh, let it out. It's tied on the chain further down. So I don't have a concern about that. So I would just basically free this, send it packing, and it can float around for the remainder of the storm and then we fall back onto the other one. So that's what happens there if we want to add more scope. So we'll talk about this blue line here. Um, why is that running back and around the wind rush?
on this and it would pull on here, then this will transfer the load to the body of the windlass. Normally this secondary line is actually tied here, down here, and so when, it, when the weight would transfer, it would transfer to a cleat and not the windlass body at all. Would I recommend you do that? No. The reason is, <laughs> I don't think most windlasses are attached to the deck as well as they could, but I know that this one is properly backed, big plates. So, we yep, Jeff did that them. himself, and you can watch that video <laughs> if you like. Back, anyway. <laughs> Big washers at the front survived the last 40 years, so I'm not worried about that. But anyway, that's what that is. Like I say, I shouldn't even have to pull back on that, but that's there in case I'm now completely snubberless, and I need to keep it. Snubberless? Whoa. Keep the load <laughs> The main concern about the load is keeping the load off of the shaft. If you leave your chain tight and the load's coming onto here, you're torquing this shaft and it damage. So that is all about it. We have also made sure to cleat off our Genoa sheets on either side so that if something does happen under here or something, it won't release. Next on the list is to secure the arch from extra motion during these high winds that we are ex expected to have. We have these little tabs here. We have one over on the other side that we use for our dinghy motor lift. And we bought the second one here. We always had it in our backup cupboard for a situation quite like this. So basically we're going to be using lines to tie an X within the arch there to give it some extra stability because there is the extra weight of the, of the solar panels on top there. We've never had to use this every time under passage. And even the other night we had that big squall and we had winds up to 33 and it did fine. It was totally fine, but we are now expected to have higher. So extra measures. Lots of other people are out getting their boats prepped. We've seen quite a few out on deck on their bows. Just gonna tie it down to this little area here. We have some pulleys on this extra lip that goes up. It looks like over on the side. And we think that they were supposed to be for our spinnaker sheets, but we have never used them. So we just took it off and now we're using it for this task. It's hard to believe that in a couple hours, all of this beauty is going to be coated with gross gray clouds, rain, stormy conditions. Oh, clouds are starting. <laughs> Also took down our courtesy flags because there's no point in them being up right now it's too windy okay plan B after we secured them they still had quite a bit of well, we movement yes yeah, so we wanted a way to tighten them up and so what we have come up with now is we are going to get those blocks that we took off that were for the spinnaker sheets we're gonna put them back and the ropes around our back smaller winches here and then we'll be able to tighten them to our likings. Also, I do apologize for the wind noise in this video, but we are having a tropical storm on its way here, so that's just how it goes. Yeah, I think this will be a better idea. I think it's pro. So pro. Joko tips. <laughs> Ah, crap. Yep, it's coming. Now we are changing gears and we are in put everything away mode that we don't want to get soaking wet. Wow. That came out of nowhere. 25 knots. And just like that, the storm is gone. Hey, secondary anchor has been tied on at the top there. And just laying the line out, ready to be deployed if needed. So we do understand that some of these tactics that we're doing are a little bit overkill for the conditions, but um, we have never been through a tropical storm before on Joko um, or on any other boat. So we're just playing it safe deploying all of the tips and tricks that we've learned from other people to keep their boat safe in hurricane force winds and I think that will be good. We're looking for no casualties here at the end of the day. Even if it's overkill, you took some extra time to get things done but you're gonna come out of it the other end all okay.
and you've learned a lot about keeping your boat safe for the rest of hurricane season. On second thought, we decided to remove our sideline solar panels, stow them down below, just safer that way. Lastly, we have a couple things here in the cockpit, a headlamp, mask, <laughs> no snorkel, but mask in case the wind gets crazy and the rain is crazy, and a flashlight. We will also have a knife that we'll bring up here just in case we do have to let go of our anchor chain and then we'll just drop it, get out of there, pick it up tomorrow. Well, we've done everything that we can think of to secure the boat. And now we just gotta wait for tonight and see what we get. We hope you enjoyed watching us prepare for this tropical storm. If you have any questions about anything that we've done, feel free to leave them in the comments and we'll get back to you. And hopefully it gave you some tips on what to do with your boat if you're ever in that situation as well. Bye for now.